Am I on? Yes, sir. Audible. Audible. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Anjana, for asking me to uh, be part of this meeting. Uh, today, I think uh, this is a very wide subject. Uh, so I don't know how much uh, Dr. Priyam is going to cover in this. Uh, Dr. Priyam is one of the upcoming young uh, budding uh, ENT consultants in Guwahati. She is on to uh, swallowing and uh, speech problems in uh, ENT patients. And uh, she is one of the people to go to if you have problems in this uh, field. So with these few words, I'd like to ask Dr. Priyam Sharma to start her deliberation. Thank you, sir. Good evening to all my teachers present here. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Anjana for uh, you know persistence with us in this regard. So today, uh, the topic, I have kept it very simple, very practical for the people to understand because it's a very confusing subject. It can be sometimes. So we have tried to uh, keep it as simple and uh, as practical as possible for us. So we have, I have just compiled uh, uh, four cases for case discussion, how we uh, took the patients on a practical basis and uh, managed them. So I would like to go to the first slide first. So dysphagia and its management, the case discussion part. So the first patient we had, he was a 54 years old male patient, recently diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and started on medications. There are some uh, issues with his movement. On uh, swallowing front, he's only complaining of occasional choking while having liquids. No problem uh, whatsoever with solid or other things. And he's hypertensive, all on medications. So only occasional choking on liquids. So uh, the general examination, vitals was okay. The chest was clear. Uh, the tongue movement, the range was normal the bit, bit of weakness was there against resistance. So we did the uh, uh, phase uh, fiber optic endoscopic evaluation of swallowing in this patient. And uh, on the left, there is a video I'd like to play. If you just see momentarily in this image, if you can see the laryngeal surface of the epiglottis is getting the dye, the methylene blue that we are using to feed the patient. So that is some amount of penetration. That is some amount of uh, food has entered into the patient's larynx. So this is what we call penetration. This is not still going below the vocal cord, staying above the vocal cord, so penetration. Uh, personally, I find this uh, group of people who are having penetration benefit a lot of uh, from swallowing therapy. So uh, what is a penetration aspiration scale that we need to do? We need to look out for in fees. In this patient, if you see, it was material enters airway, remains above vocal cord. So it was level two in this patient, ejected from the airway. So what we are planning to do in this patient, first of all, chin down position. So what it makes, uh, it makes the pharyngeal airway a little bit narrower so that the fluid cannot directly go into the larynx when the patient is swallowing. Bolus size less than three ml. So what happens when we drink water at home? We just gulp down sips of water and then it causes you know, sudden choking episodes. So if you take sips of water, very small bolus size, the pharynx is more well equipped to handle that size of food. Uh, again, supraglottic swallow. This patient had no problem with semi-solid. So you can just restrict this supraglottic swallow to drinking liquids only. So what do we do in the supraglottic swallow? The patient first gulps a bit of water. He has to stop the breath. He has to swallow. And while expiration, he has to let out a voluntary cough so that whatever amount of fluid has gone into the larynx will be out with the cough. So no micro aspiration happening over a period of time in this patient. Uh, a case two, this is again a neurological patient. He had history of stroke about two weeks ago, 67 years old male, uh, was hospitalized in some other hospital for about one week. 
and then since he started having this uh, uh, following problem could not eat could not uh, swallow properly he was put on rice tube and then uh, with medication he was uh, let to go home known hypertensive and when he came to us he was on nasogastric feeding so uh, on the right there are three images so first we'll have a look at the video if you can see so we are going the rice tube is still in c2 ideally the rice tube should be removed before doing the phase but the patient party was uh, insistent that we keep it because the patient found the reinfection very difficult so if you can see the very onset lot of secretions so patient is unable to take care of his own salivary secretions let alone any other extra food that might come his way vocal cord movement is okay so yes this is a very important parameter that we have to look for there is cough happening with his own salivary secretions which are trying to aspirate into the larynx so now after coughing the larynx is a bit clear so what happens when we give the liquid please bear with me ah yeah the liquid see even before the patient has started swallowing the liquid has made its way into the piriform sinus so that is premature spillage the tongue is not properly pushing and as you can see from the retroretinoid area the fluid is e easily going into the larynx in fact even below the larynx it's going into the trachea so this is now what i want to stop the video here what i'm trying to do here is feast feast with sensory stimulation so normally when we are doing feast we do not give any kind of throat anesthesia so if we are trying to touch the tip of the scope to any part in normal patient that should elicit a very good cough reflex now what see what happens in this patient my tip of the scope is going to touch his uh, right arytenoid process and even if i touch it there is absolutely no response whatsoever so the laryngeal sensation has been affected by the stroke so this is one of the very important parameters that we have to look for in especially in post stroke patients if the laryngeal sensation is intact or not because that will uh, uh, dictate to a lot extent what kind of therapy you are going to give so in this patient uh, if you see our next step should be number 1 to take care of the laryngeal sensation that is neuromuscular electrical stimulation so generally we are using uh, that for patients who are having facial nerve palsy uh, with or without parotid surgery so the same type of thing can be used for pharyngeal musculature also but in this patient this kind of nmes is not uh, yet available in northeast so they decided to go to uh, some hospital in delhi and get it right now the patient should continue with the nasogastric uh, feed tube because obviously uh, there is no role of oral feeding when he is aspirating his own salivary secretions we would also like to advise masako maneuver in this patient which helps to increase the force of pharyngeal contraction so just put a diagram for reference purposes so this is the normal resting condition of the pharynx so when we push the bolus down the base of tongue has to come in contact with the posterior pharyngeal wall what happens when we do the masako the patient has to bite the tongue in between the incisor teeth very lightly and sorry he has to practice dry swallow with his own saliva so it makes it very hard for the posterior pharyngeal wall to come and meet the base of tongue in this condition so that the superior constrictor muscle has to work more over a long period of time this will help the pharyngeal muscles to become stronger and of course tongue exercise in this patient so uh, maybe we'll call him after 4 5 weeks for review after the stimulation is done and if uh, the laryngeal and and a lot of patient do improve with nmes in this patient we had a lot of post covid patient who had gone out of the state uh, done just 10 day uh, neuromuscular uh, electrical stimulation and had very good result but provided they should be given as early as possible after the stroke has happened uh 
coming to an oncology case, uh, this was a 55 years old female uh, referred to us from other center. She had a history of radiotherapy for CA larynx about three years ago. No document was available at that time with her. Uh, recently, she underwent neck dissection at some other center for some nodal tumor. Again, she did not bring any documents, so staging was not possible for us at that time. Known diabetic, although on medications, and now she's on rice tube feed. So uh, on the left, you can see this is the neck wound that is still not healed. It's more than three weeks uh, since the surgery has happened. The stitches are still there. On the video, if I play that, lot of edema, the post art edema is still visible. Vocal folds are mobile, but not uh, to the full extension. It's a bit restricted. So if you can see, I will just like to pause the video. The patient is trying to follow. You can see the pharynx is trying to move, but the larynx is not completely elevating. So whether it's because of the post-radiation stiffness or because of the surgery, the strap muscles are not working properly, the hyolaryngeal elevators group of muscle. So when these muscles don't elevate the larynx, no hyolaryngeal elevation is happening, no whiteout phase. And as a result, since we all know hyolaryngeal elevation is very important to open up the cricopharyngeal sphincter. So what happens, you can see later in the video, there is some accumulation of the residue in the pyriform sinuses. So the food is not going below the trichopharynx. And with subsequent bolus, the first two ml, the next one ml, all the residue will make its way into the larynx. So you can see here, the methylene blue dye is gently resting over the vocal fold and there is no attempt by the patient to cough that out. So this is, will be a score of penetration and uh, aspiration scale of seven, uh, where the food material goes below the level of vocal folds and is not ejected completely. So you can see in the images also, the trichopharynx not opening up properly, lot of residue in the pyriform sinuses and uh, uh, still remaining inside the laryngeal inlet. Uh, so we should also take into consideration that this is not the normal amount of food that we are giving. We are giving very small amount, two to three ml in the OT or in the setup. When the patient goes back to house, the amount of food is much more. We are taking a sip of water when you're taking one teaspoon of food. So the residue buildup is going to be more, the aspiration is going to be more. So you have to take care of that fact. Now in this patient, uh, obviously right now, oral feeding is not a good idea. Uh, we cannot give a lot of neck exercises because the wound is not completely healed. There are some exercises we can give to, uh, you know, release the trichopharynx and uh, loosen up the trichopharynx a bit. Masako maneuver can be given in order to, as we showed in the earlier slide, to increase the pharyngeal contraction. But what? can we do to take off the rice tube? So rice tube should not ideally be in the place for more than six weeks at a go. And it's already been about three weeks uh, from the day of surgery. So if she still does not show any improvements in the few four weeks to come, then uh, probably a gastrostomy, you know, uh, percutaneous gastrostomy is a big thing nowadays, not too much hazardous for the patient. So that can be done in order to improve the nutrition for the patient at least till the neck wound completely heals up. There are a lot of information that we could have got from the patient, you know, regarding the nodal metastasis and all, but not much available was with her. Uh, I'm coming to the last case, even I'm at a loss what to do with this case, so maybe if we discuss, we can find some solution. This was a very young patient, Manipuri Vimal, uh, who came to us 24 years of uh, age. She had Japanese encephalitis about two years ago and had to be ventilated for a period of, I think, uh, two to three weeks. And then she was trache uh, tracheostomized. Now uh, she's dependent on tracheostomy. She lived with the tracheostomy for over one year. Decannulation was tried at some other hospital about four months ago. Uh, the patient developed uh, aspiration pneumonia. So the tracheostomy always used was cough tracheostomy too. So they had to recannulate her again. 
Now she's completely thinned out, poor nutrition, lot of secretions in her mouth, and she desperately wants to go up the tracheostomy. So what happens in the video, if you can see, now tracheostomy is a very well-known uh, thing that decreases your hyolaryngeal elevation because there is something always pulling down on the trachea. So the elevation of the larynx can be tricky. So you can see the patient is trying hard to swallow, but at no point the pharynx squeezes enough to touch the, the score. So all the things, these go into the cricopyriform uh, sinuses. The cricopharynx, again, as a result of decreased hyolaryngeal elevation is not opening up and lot of residue formation in the pyriform sinuses. So again, as you can imagine with subsequent bolus, more food to come, this will obviously result in aspiration. So what could we do in this patient? For the time being, I have just given her something as a smooth muscle relaxant to uh, open up the trichopharynx. There is a drug called hyoscyanamide. So I've just given her for that and given her some neck exercises. But is there any possible way to decannulate her and uh, send her home with a good swallowing uh, exercise? Yeah, open for discussion. So uh, with these four discussions, I would like to uh, close my presentation. Thank you so much for your patient listening. Sure. Hello? Yeah. As of now, no questions. <clears throat> In that Ma'am, I have a question. I have a question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pratish Mita, please. Yeah. Um, uh, Priyamba, like uh, when you say it about that for higher laryngeal elevation, when the uh, person was having problem after the tracheostoma, am I right? It was the, uh, the higher laryngeal elevation was uh, difficult after the tracheostoma. Hello, sir. Is... Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So uh, after that, like, uh, can you just tell, like, uh, in if uh, there are some uh, like stiffness with the hyolaryngeal hello, part. Sir? Or... Hello, Priyam. Priyam, you, uh, what is the problem? You uh, can't hear. You can't hear, Priyam. Hello, Priyam. I think Priyam. Priyam is out of reach <laughs> because of the network problem. Let's see. Okay. Can I type the question? I think I should yeah, type yeah. the question. Yeah, yeah. Type the question, then I will speak out. Read out. Uh, okay. Or shall I give it to you, the question? Okay. okay I'll just... So my okay. question was, uh, that, like, if there's a stiffness in the, uh, there, definitely there's always a stiffness with the hyolaryngeal part, even after the tracheostoma, whether the person underwent radiation or not. Like, if the radiation is there, definitely there's edema. And if there is no radiation also, the, with the after trachea, we generally see kind of stiffness and the muscle contractions are there. So uh, is there any kind of uh, like uh, relaxation medications do you give or uh, along with the therapy, uh, like uh, like for muscle relaxations? So is there anything like that or shall, shall like if I get some patient, so can I send them for that also along with the therapies uh, which we give? Okay. For medications, for muscle relaxations. Okay. Priyam. Hello, Priyam. Priyam is not there. Uh, uh, Bisa. Hello, Anjana Baidu. Uh, yes, can you hear? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you, Priyam. Hello. I think, uh, sir, uh, Ahmed, sir. Hello. 
or <laughs> or like ma'am, net- ma'am, you are audible yeah i'm but audible I'm, now yes yes you're audible yeah uh, we've lost priyamba for sure and uh, amit sir also most probably most probably yeah uh, biswajit gogoi can you help her out uh, this on pritismita's questions i think muscle relaxation hyacin we can give but i'm not sure priyam amit sir 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 unmute mute nahi sir 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 we can't hear you sir is saying something hello priyam amit sir apuni huni se Amit sir, audio is not working for sure. Yeah, that's why. My lucky is to have a question too. If some they can oh, put up in the group. Ha ha, you can uh, you can write. Uh, Amit sir, it is how per go. Ha. nine um matter what else okay I have for Pritish Mita's uh, query that after tracheostomy, if the muscle muscle stiffness is there, so uh, that's what we give. We usually give virodol, you know, thiocalcicoside for the skeletal muscles. We can give for the neck muscles, and for the smooth muscle, uh, the natural alkaloid hyoscyamine is there available in the market. For the temporary measure, these two can be used to uh, relieve the muscle spasm just after the procedure. Yeah. Yeah, that's what she was asking. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, like so, we can uh, send for the uh, this one, like uh, for the medications uh, along with the therapy. Yeah. Okay. One more question I have. Yes. Uh, so, uh, if we if if a person has a kind of palsy, abductor adductor palsy. Okay. So, if the and because the abductor adductor palsy may be because of the uh, cancer or the uh, this removal after the surgery. So, uh, there. uh because uh, because they are having no difficulty with the breathing and also they have to undergo the tracheostoma so um, the, uh, what do you think is the prognosis of such kind of uh, patient like especially with abductor abductor palsy okay it has to be a bilateral if the patient has to be tracheostomized yeah. like if if the abductor palsy is there so one side it will not cause much of a problem for the patient but if no, it's bilateral obviously yeah. uh, airway takes the precedent over the swallowing so we have to secure the tracheostomy and nowadays there are some diversion procedures available you know you can separate the larynx from the trachea uh, not performed here currently noticed but it is similar to the uh, laryngectomy procedure so we uh, create a separate pathway for the food to go and the uh, Uh, tracheostom will take uh, shape out in the uh, form of a stoma in front of the neck okay but what do you think is the um, uh, outcome for swallowing at that time so like uh, if we do that so there will be definitely a lot of issue with because i have heard about a patient like that so what you said like you know giving a separate uh, i don't know what is that surgery called but that mm-hmm. patient had issue with uh, having granular substances he could he could have some kind of milk thickness he could have he could have water uh, but uh, not sorry milk thickness he can have but for water sometimes he has aspiration 
बट मेन प्रॉब्लम ग्रेन्यूलर सब्सटेंसेस लाइक चावल लाइक फॉर राइस ही विल हैव प्रॉब्लम बट फॉर रोटी ही कैन हैव इफ इट इज मैश्ड पोटेटो ही कैन हैव सो बट इफ इट्स ग्रेन्यूलर थिंग सपोज इट्स सूजी और इट्स राइस सो those kind of thing like atta kind of thing he cannot have so that time he has spillage or he he used to say that he used to get this spilling mm-hmm. up so is there anything that most probably to... happening because uh, during the surgery uh, hmm. the cricopharyngeal myotomy was probably not done a lot of patient they do have this problem even after laryngectomy procedure okay so that is very important to uh, release the cricopharyngeal muscle while during the surgery okay Okay. Okay. So, uh, in in that case, as uh, uh, shall we send it to the ENT again? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Can you please repeat the question? Look, I am asking. So, in that case, uh, can I like can we we are supposed to send them for a laryngoscopic evaluation and then for uh, some this one? And uh, I think uh, VFS will be a better one in this patient. Okay. We okay, need okay. a dynamic uh, food study. and fees will not be sufficient in this patient because we want to go below the larynx or below the new pharynx so video okay. fluoroscopic study is uh, ideal in this patient okay 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 understood okay dr sanjita is asking is there is there a swallowing advice or evaluation protocol for post pctr surgery yes a uh, protocol is like after the healing is complete you know whatever stitches are there and all the healing is complete uh, we need to go for some kind of swallowing evaluation whether it is fees whether it is vfs so depending on how much comfortable the patient is if the fees is there then it's always better because it will go give uh, go, uh, give you a good anatomical look also uh, the post uh, surgery status yes Doctor Priyam Ba, um, like uh, you've probably done fees in uh, post PCTR patients. So, any particular observation from your side? Uh, in which case, the PCTR patients, PCTR patient, okay, yeah, post recurrent trachea. Yeah. Huh. I mean, what kind of and criteria? Any, any particular fees evaluation exactly? Like any particular observation during fees study? Uh, no 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 always look for whether the food is going into the airway or not that is it we don't want the patient to cough right in this uh, pctr patient so any aspiration has to be taken care of that's it so if we need more time for the patient not to cough maybe put up put, put in him some other non oral feeding and if there is no aspiration then well ahead we can go ahead with his normal feeding and all all right normal feeding after how many days of uh, surgery yeah, it depends on how well the patient does in the post surgery evaluation of following oh. hmm. amit sir will you say some few words sir we can't hear you sir apna headphone to kam karane niki sir sir without headphone it was good in the initially and we can take a question for dr gautam khan in the chat box Ah, that's sorry. Yeah. <laughs> also, oh, sorry, it's trying, no? Ah, sorry, mute the voice. There is an issue with the sound ah. today. Ah, <laughs> it was so nice, but at yeah. least before, before at the least presentation it was working so nice. Ah, at least presentation went on smoothly. Ah, my sir, can you remove the that headphone connection? I think it will work. Ahmed sir, maybe he is not hearing our. 
talking. No, he's talking something. He's talking. I can read his lip reading. Telephone call like you. I'll just come back to you later, okay? Okay. Yeah. In the meantime, maybe Priyamba, you can take up the question by counsel. Dr. Priyam. Yes, we are making a question of the more than four minutes. Sir, he took a point of GSA. Sir, 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 wait, wait. Lost the voice. Hello. One minute, sir. One minute. Why? Okay. We can we can make out his voice. Uh, now. Can you hear, Sanjita? I can hear you. No, no, sir. Voice, sirs. Wait, that. Uh, volume. Ah. Uh, okay, sir. It's, uh, very clear, but uh, let him continue. Let's see how much we can get it. Yes, sir. Continue, sir. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Priyam has uh, got the uh, appropriate suggestions. I don't think I have anything to add to it. Okay, sir. Uh, and uh, while, uh, once we finish, I want to uh, present one of my problem cases also. Uh, once we finish the discussion on these you can you can do that okay yeah now uh, we had a 40, 45 year old female sir, uh, sir sir one minute sir priyam can you hear oh, yes sir okay you you write it down and i'll ask sir priyam yeah sanjita no that to me to priyam logai diya na phone on Mm, for not okay let's oh, see that time i was uh, putting on the phone only sir silo su for not connect kori oh na mane sanjita priyam priyam aur voice su no no i can hear you can you hear me now ha ha yes we can hear you sir to amit sir is asking you something you just listen yes. okay yes Yes, sir. Sir, please continue. Okay, okay. you have you have posted. Okay. Consider just see the chat box. There is nothing yet. And uh, a counselor has written something, but sir, Apuna to Ahanai. Counselor has, uh, he has asking uh, from a swallowing specialist viewpoint, how long would you like to keep RT fit and how early or when should we consider PZ? Yes, so ideally in textbook, it's mentioned about six to eight weeks, the rice tube can be uh, kept because after that it starts, it's already a foreign body in the cricopharynx and the cricopharyngeal muscles, they start to go into spasm. So it makes the swallowing difficulty even more pronounced and it makes the swallowing therapy even more difficult for the patient. 
So uh, also the prognosis, if you think the issue is not going to be resolved in a matter of weeks, then probably it's better to do a PEG. So not only it will remove the rice tube and keep the tricofiring free, it will also improve the nutrition of the patient for the time being. Type for you, enter for you, is it? Type for you, Oh, oh, it has come, yes. I said, I said. Can you see, Priyam? Yes, yes. I have a problem with a case of 45-year-old female with CA oral tongue on whom we did a hemiglossectomy with the selective neck dissection level one to four and free ALT uh, flap reconstruction. She underwent post-op RTCT and subsequently had to be put on RT feet due to post-RTCT reaction. Her RT came out and uh, she has total dysphagia. Endoscopy showed complete stenosis. Yes, this is also one of the cases that I intended to put up. Now, post RT fibrosis is a very difficult thing to deal with. So normally what happens if you have a post-traumatic patient, he has stenosis or contracture, we can go for release of the contracture with coblation or with cold steel. But in post RT, the, um, I don't have much obviously surgical experience, but in my opinion, I think the use of uh, surgery in this patient to release the stenosis will be very limited because the tissues are no, lo no longer the normal tissue that used to be. These are very fibrotic tissue. So they have a tendency to go into fibrosis again post-surgery. Uh, so I think uh, counselor or Kudush Amesa will be able to tell more about this patient. But most probably maybe the patient has to go on to gastrostomy for a longer duration of time. In this patient, we have a, the, I think Dr. Vivek, he's not uh, online right now. He sent me a patient about one week back. This patient, three times he had primary uh, uh, disease once in the base of tongue, once in uh, RMT. And he's been on gastroscopy for about more than one year. Lot of stenosis at different level in the pharynx. So maybe gastrostomy is the final answer for this patient. She did undergo a, a feeding jejunoscomy actually. Yes, okay. Uh, she is still on feeding jejunoscomy and she has now got absolute dysphagia. We yes. did a CT scan and they said there is a stenotic segment uh, in the uh, cricocarynx and the upper esophagus. They are not okay. sure how, how much the length is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the losses things to be done. Post RT uh, story is very diff diff difficult to manage. Whether RT. it is, uh, yes. Chemotherapy. Chemotherapy adds to the uh, radiotherapy reactions. No? Ah, that works, sir. Very difficult to manage. So her disease was in the tongue, but she has uh, developed stenosis in the cricoprings and upper esophagus. Okay. RT and CT issues. Yes. So what do you think of the tracheostomy patients uh, that I showed in the last video? Sir, because uh, she's so young and uh, such a difficult problem to handle. Like if you take the tracheostomy off, she has aspiration. <laughs> so, uh, that's not, uh, that's not it, it's a vicious cycle. Tracheostomy, it hampers the swallowing. Swallowing hampers the tracheostomy, all these things. Yes. Hmm. Unless you have a permanent tracheostomy there. Yeah. This is the role of very early swallowing therapy. Like if she had some, you know, exercise as a therapy in the early days, maybe the issue would not have that much progressed, you know, hampering the higher laryngeal elevation and all. Even in the case we had, she went home, right tube came out, and she reported after about one week of right tube missing. Okay. She had a gastrostomy, so she had a and she was taking her teeth with that. Or, uh, no, during um, this thing, she had a right tube in C2. Uh, no, she had a feeding of gastrostomy. Uh, Later on, she had the right tube coaching. Okay. Okay. 
Yes, no news. Actually, no. there are a lot of power failures. Even just Fire. now, I faced it. Yeah, so the Wi-Fi is going off. Okay, I think we'll wind off today, sir. And only one message I think we can get for while projecting the RT or CT. They have to take care of the upper upper feeding food pipe, no, sir. Uh, yes, yes. I think uh, that uh, needs more care in this. Yes, sir. Both the cases, I think uh, there was probably need for more intensive uh, swallowing therapy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because uh, both these cases had uh, similar problems. First, uh, in uh, Priyam's case, I think uh, the Passage is still open, isn't it? Yeah. The pickup center is still open. He told. In your case? No, again, she uh, went offline. Um, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Okay. I, 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 I uh, Sarah yeah. is asking the cryptopharynx was patent or not? I have in the tracheostomy case. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. The cryptopharynx was patent, but because the tracheostomy has a way of pulling the larynx below. So the larynx has to elevate when we swallow. Since the elevation is hampered by the tracheostomy pulling down the larynx, that's why the cricopharyngeal uh, opening is not that good. But the spasm part is not there. The cricopharyngeal muscle is acting fine. Yeah, hello. She can't stay without tracheostomy, right? No, if it's coughed and uh, if she takes food, she aspirates. Yes, sir. So that's why she she was decannulated about four months back. She had some issues with lungs and aspiration pneumonia, and then she was recannulated. Okay. Are you giving swallowing therapy? Yes, I did some uh, this head breathing exercise just to release the cricopharynx muscle. But ideally, I think what we should do, we should take off everything from the pharynx. We should put her on a peg for some time. And then we should work for the neck muscles and all. Because keeping the tracheostomy is not going to help with any therapy in the long run. So you should take her off all the pharyngeal tubes and all. Put her on peg for at least two months or three months do a rigorous swallowing therapy and whatnot. And then maybe with time, she can uh, go back to oral feeding. Okay. Sir, we'll wind up today. Okay. And thank you so much, sir, um, for uh, sparing your valuable time. And in spite of your to, to do, you had a surgery also, I believe. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, no, sir, it's okay. This this much is more than enough, sir. And thank you so much. Thank you, Priyam. Uh, thank you for the lucid, lucid presentation. And thank you, all the viewers. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Anjana. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.